booster program is going really well. 20 million people now, I think, and rising. I've got my booster a week today. Hope you've had yours, Kay. You know, people are really building their enthusiasm now for that program. Um, and if we carry on as we are, then hopefully all will be well. Thank you for sharing with my audience, uh, Minister, that I'm a lot older than you. Uh, Pre-travel COVID tests. <laughs> no, um, mine is delayed. Have... Mine's delayed because I had, uh, I had COVID well in saved, March. Minister, so I had well to delay saved. mine. You were like, <laughs> yeah. it's true. Okay. Yeah, and I had mine early. Uh, I didn't. Uh, Pre-travel COVID tests, uh, day two pre-departure tests. Why did we ever get rid of those? You know, if we're only going to put those in as a knee-jerk when we get one of these variants in, it's already too late. You know, we need to shut the door before the horse is bolted? Well, no, we have to be agile, right? We have to recognise that all these things are impositions on people's uh, lives and lifestyles. They're obviously extra cost, and they cause difficulty for the travel industry. Now, we need to try and smooth that as much as possible and be proportionate about our response. You know, I, we've got family overseas. We're going to be travelling at Christmas. We're having you know, tests in and out, in and out, both ways. And it is a total pain, especially if you've got kids, right? So we understand that. And so we have to be proportionate and make these judgments at the right moment. That's what we've done. And it feels to me as if in the face of the unknown on this virus at the moment, for the next few yeah. weeks, that's where we need to broadly be. But, but surely they're only ever effective if they're left in place until we see the back of this pandemic. Otherwise, we're saying, oh, it's already in. We need to put these day two tests, pre detached tests in again. It's too late by then. Well, I don't think it necessarily is. I mean, obviously, there's lots of testing going on, right? We're in a great place on testing. People have got used to it. They understand it. Uh, but there are lots of requirements around the world, and there's movements of virus around the world that we need to pay attention to. So being agile, it strikes me, is the best thing, Kay. We want to try and live as normal a life as we possibly can, as the various you know, evolutions of this virus work their way through the system. And that means that we're going to have to you know, duck and drake a bit, I'm afraid. Now, Prime Minister is doing his best. Uh, to help us live as normal life as possible, recognising that we don't know everything we need to know yet about different variations and that we might need to do certain things like this as, as time goes on. So I think the okay. British people generally accept that notion. OK, um, here comes the Christmas party question. Um, the uh, police commissioner, the uh, London police commissioner, Cressida Dick, says reports of this party or one of the parties at number 10 on the 18th of December have not been reported to her. Should they be? Well, I, I, I thought somebody had reports. I read in the paper that some Labour MPs had reported this uh, supposed event. Um, I mean, as I say, Kay, I know nothing about it. I've been assured by Number 10 that no rules were broken. Uh, if there was a gathering of any kind, um, uh, for your information, at the time I was kicking indoors in Basildon with Essex Police on a drugs gang, uh, which is what I'm here to talk about. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the police will have a look. It's for them to form a judgment. Crime has been coming down overall in the, in the last couple of years, but we're seeing a lot of problems caused by these 300,000 problem drugs users. So what we're doing is we're ramping up our campaign against the, the county lines uh, networks that are, that are preying on these users. You've got to invest in rehabilitation. Everybody who knows about drugs crime will tell you that 300,000 people, their lives are chaotic. Uh, they need to be taken off drugs, they need to be put into rehab. You've got to invest in rehab. But you've also got to come down hard on the gangsters who are, who are making hell of people's lives. Tell you what, if ever I clap eyes on that Mr Johnson, oh, will I give him a piece of my mind? Well, I wouldn't want to be in Boris Johnson's shoes the day he meets you, Mrs I am proud uh, to tell you that it was, in, it was here in London in 1871 that a group of burly, mustachioed and mildly inebriated Victorians met at a Pub. Put a crunch on it, make it a double. Yeah. What's he doing here? Let's forget the drink, I've got to go. I'm going to have a pint of bitter. 